What's up, everybody? It's Andrew from the Jaguar Podcast, and today my guest for this discussion is Jacksonville Jaguars linebacker Foye Aluakun. Uh, Foye Aluakun was drafted in 2018 by the Atlanta Falcons in the sixth round out of Yale. He played for the Falcons from 2018 to 2021, and then he was picked up by the Jaguars in the offseason in 2022. Uh, he led the uh, league in tackles in 2021. And he has a career 462 total tackles, 272 solo, five sacks, five interceptions, seven forced fumbles, and 12 tackles for a loss. Give it up for the great Foye Aluakan. Foye, what's up, man? How's it going? Good. How are you doing tonight? Doing great. Thanks so much for taking the time to jump on the podcast, man. Really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate you hitting me up. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, uh, that. yeah, yeah. Welcome to Duval as well. We're we're happy to have you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely excited to get you going here. Uh, I guess on Sunday we're starting. Yeah, yeah. I was meaning to ask you. You know, we had um, we had Chad Muma on the the podcast a few weeks ago, and uh, I was just kind of curious how mini camp was going and how the, how do the rookies look. They look pretty good, um, you know, in terms of you know, just overall football ability. They d definitely both have a lot, talking about the linebacker room, or inside linebacker room. And then in general, all of the rookies, I feel like they um, are all hardworking and definitely want to put their best foot forward. So they're taking advice and being coachable, which I think is the most important thing when you first come in as a um, NFL player. Uh, so I think that, you know, they have a bright future ahead of them and, you know, just making sure they're keep that best foot forward and, you know, improving every day and try to win games while we're at it. Awesome to hear, man. And, you know, as you being a seasoned veteran, uh, and I don't know when this happens or not, whether it's mini camp or training camp, but have the, have the rookie, uh, have the rookie pranks started yet? <laughs> nah, ain't no pranks. I mean, Chad and uh, Devin, they bought us snacks for the room. That's, that's about it. <laughs> pranks right now. I'm sure during camp they'll have like a, a talent show or some sort. I don't know how this team does it, but I know the rookie always had to get up and perform something uh, whenever they're called in front of the team meeting. It's always a fun, fun couple of days when they have to do that. Awesome, awesome. So, um, you know, I was I was uh, doing some research into you know your journey into the NFL, and it's a, it's a great story, and it's fairly similar similar to uh, your teammate Jamal Agnew. You know, you uh, you know were. Uh, not invited to the NFL Combine, but then you you know you host your own pro day and you kill it. You run like a four, I think it was like a four four eight. You impress a lot of the the um, scouts and and NFL teams, and then you end up getting drafted by the Atlanta Falcons um, in 2018. So I was just kind of curious, you know, what kept you going? What kept you you know driving towards you know meeting your goal despite you know a little adversity? I didn't really see it as adversity at the time. I just saw it as what I had to do in order to make it into the league. Um, I don't think they, you know, drafted me at a position where I didn't, where I feel like I should have been drafted higher. Um, I kind of went into there because I knew how hard it was and how good of players, you know, don't make the NFL. So just being able to be drafted is a blessing right there. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal was really to make the roster and be able to be a contributor on the team and then uh, see what happens from there. Um, so whether I got drafted or not drafted, um, you know, it was all part of the process. I, I trained every day like I wasn't going to be drafted. And, uh, you know, that allowed me to do well in my pro day. That allowed me to do well. As soon as I got to rookie mini camp, you know, I felt like I had kind of an undrafted chip on my shoulder, uh, just proving that I belonged in the building. Uh, not necessarily that I should have been drafted higher, but just proving that I had a spot, I mean, even though I came from the Ivy League, which was considered a, you know, not necessarily a lesser talent, but just, you know, a lesser pool to pull from, I feel like. Um, I just I deserved a spot over whoever, you know, was competing with me at that at that position. Yeah, I mean it's an amazing story. Kudos to you. Um, I was doing a little more, uh, you know, research into your to kind of your your background. You went to high, uh, well, you grew up in Missouri rather, and then um, I was Thank reading you. Uh, you went to high school and played high school football with Zeke Elliott. Is that true? Uh, uh, yeah, that's very true. We went to uh, school. From seventh to twelfth grade together, same uh, private school over there, John Burroughs School. It's a very educational school, so just the fact that we both made it uh, to the NFL from there, with you know, we had classes of maybe 50, 50 boys per class, hundred kids per class, um, at, and our football team had twenty eight kids at one time. We had more cheerleaders than, than football players, but it was fun for everybody. And we did well while we were there, so you know, it taught us uh, work ethic and hard work and how to just enjoy the game. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's pretty cool, too. I mean, Zeke just being a great running back, how he is, you know, and uh, were you guys close? I mean, are you guys still friends or? Yeah, we're still friends. Uh, very close during high school and stuff. Uh, when we went to college, you know, we're very focused on our, um, you know, goals and, and where we were headed in life, whether that was going to be football or something after football. But we still kept in touch. And now that we're back in the league and uh, able to see each other uh, on the field and, you know, we kind of have an off season to line. We definitely see each other a couple of times off season, too. Nice. I was watching some of your 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 highlight footage, and I uh, did come across a game in 2020 when you played the Cowboys, yeah. and I believe you had a uh, forced fumble. You stripped the ball from Zeke Elliott there. I, I feel like you kind of secretly got some satisfaction from that. <laughs> um, it's funny because like even during the game, I'm always rooting for him. I think I'm his biggest fan in the NFL. Uh, I just want to see him succeed and do well. So. Um, you know, I, I but I'm also like a bigger competitor than I am a fan. So I hope he does well, but I also hope that I do better. So we'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um. You, you know, I was I was also wanted to ask you, you played alongside Matt Ryan, you know, uh, quarterback for the Falcons, amazing quarterback. Uh, seems like a great guy. What was it like playing alongside him? It's cool. I think he, um, you know, coming and seeing him work every day and, uh, the amount of people that looked up to him in our in our locker room, uh, I definitely just you know immediately gained respect for him, and he um, never really changes throughout the you know whether we're doing well or we're doing poorly. He's always going to put the same uh, work in, um, and he, you know, somebody who, as I said earlier, can everybody can look up to and learn how to work from. Uh, I think he's definitely a, a a true professional, true student of the game, and kind of teaches you how to be successful going on in this league. So I, I love just watching. Like I wasn't really that close to him. To, close to him until my third or fourth year I started talking to him more. I was kind of um, not afraid to talk to older guys, but uh, he's a special teams guy and kind of end of the roster guys. I, I would say I know my role. I just, you know, went about my work. And then as I got more and more respect in the locker room, you know, I was able to talk with them more and more. And, um, you know, just him saying that, like, I'm doing a great job and I do it the right way and stuff. Like, that was a, a big compliment that he said to me one day. And I just took that, um, you know, and decided – you know, I'm doing the right things. I might as well keep going, keep going with it. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure you're excited to uh, be playing in this upcoming season. He'll be a division oh, sure. rival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for sure. That would be weird for me, like seeing him in a, and, and him seeing me in a whole other jersey. I'm sure that would be a weird little feeling at first. But <laughs> I'm going to try to win. Yes, sir. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, you joined the Jaguars um, this off season. You had, you know, a number of of teams. I'm sure you could have you could have signed with. I was just kind of curious. Why did you go uh, with Jacksonville? Um, I just saw the way that the program could head uh, quickly. I mean, obviously, the year before uh, Jacksonville didn't have the greatest year, but you know, my agent told me you know, keep every team um, in consideration. So then, when Jacksonville came with interest, not even offer yet. We kind of sat down and, and and looked into it and saw, you know, what position they would probably have me playing, um, players that they could bring in, players that were already on the team, and kind of just how I want my career to go in the future. I think that Jacksonville is the best fit for me um, in terms of the uh, coaches really trusting me, kind of to lead the defense and stuff. And, you know, I feel like the, it's kind of a younger team. Kids are going to look up to me and stuff. And uh, everybody's hardworking and hungry, and that's exactly what I want. Uh, to play with his teammates and as a defense in general. Yeah, I mean, we're happy to have you too, man. Um, excited to see what you can do this upcoming season. Um, you know, Coach uh, Peterson, you know, new head coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, Super Bowl winning coach. Uh, are you excited to be to be playing playing under Coach uh, Coach Peterson? Of course, um, I think he's a great coach. I know that all the players are liking him so far, um, and seems to have our best interests in mind. So. You know, coach has already been there, and uh, one, he was a player, so he understands how we think, and then he's won a Super Bowl, so he knows how success looks or how it, how teams should operate. Um, that's really all you need in the coach right now. Um, so I put my you know trust in him that he has our best interests at heart, and you know, I want to do everything in the power to win win games with him. Yeah, you know, you have a new defensive coordinator too, Coach Mike Caldwell. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you can tell me much about this, but and I understand if if you can't. But as a fan, you know, defensively, can we expect, you know, just straight four three schemes, or is it? Can we expect maybe a little bit of mixture of both, maybe uh, three four? Mixture. Okay, uh, I think you know, as preseason goes on, obviously it's his first time um, being the head guy, so as preseason goes on, I think 
it's just natural to find out what we're best at, how we operate. It's our first time all playing together too. So yeah. we're gonna find out what we're best at and what works for us. And that's all you need. Like if you if you can just be a straight, you know, whatever, three, four, four, three, and that works for you the best, I'm sure that's what we'll be running. But if we need to mix it up or try to, you know, not be predictable, uh, that's how we operate, then I'm sure that's what we'll do. Okay, cool. Um, you know, I, I I watched, you know, your 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 style of play, man. You're you're flying to the ball. You're aggressive. You can hit. You can rush the passer. Um, you know, you can drop back in coverage. Um, you know, you could do it all, and it's fun to watch. I was just kind of curious, what were some of your influences growing up in terms or, or idols, you know, uh, for NFL players? So I was a DB my whole life until I got to the NFL. So people like have all these, you know, expectations of me, like watching linebackers and stuff, which I didn't. Um, I kind of just, you know played video games and made trades legal, whatever. I just put the best ones on my team at all times. But um, as a defensive back, I used to love watching, you know, Champ Bailey. Um, I think he was my favorite. Namdi Asimwa, he played for the Raiders. Um, those were my two favorite growing up. Then eventually Tyron Matthew in college, he had the best, you know, uh, while I was in high school, he had the best, you know, high, highlight tape out there for a defensive back. Um, so it's kind of like those playmakers that, that kind of always – influenced my game but even then it was kind of funny um i always wanted to be around the football so let's say i created myself in video games i would make myself you know a defensive back up my speed but then i'd plug myself in linebacker so i could you know rush the passer i could uh cover or be in the rat and holes um trying to you know be the quarterback spy intercept passes over the middle and stuff so it's kind of funny because i feel like that's kind of the player that i'm becoming um you know, a, a quick linebacker who can do a multitude of things on the football field. So I feel like that's kind of, you know, the playmaking style the, the fit of the defensive back wanting the ball in his hands and all that. And then kind of the playmaking style of the linebacker that I created, trying to get to the football or however possible. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because you, you had said that you're, you know, defensive back at first and then, you know, you, you, you became a, a linebacker in the NFL, well, in college and NFL. But, um, you know, I was reading and I noticed that they had you had been playing, you know, weak side linebacker and then they switched you to Mike. Um, mm -hmm. Was that a, like a big learning curve or was it was it just, you know, not that big of a deal in terms of, of learning a, a different um, spot? It's, it's on paper. It's really not that big. But in the game, it's a little different just because, you know, at Mike, you're usually lined up in the middle of the box where you're seeing both the guards from, you know, kind of in the middle from both eyes. Will, you're usually lined up maybe over the tight end or passing straight for a little bit. You're on the edge of the box a little bit, talking about in a 4-3 or nickel 4-2-5 type thing, where I'm kind of looking at the line through like one eye, kind of diagonally. So I actually see like pullers coming to me and I have more time to react. But I also, when I did play Will, it was all over the field. Sometimes I lined up as a nickel. Sometimes I would line up as a corner even. Uh, I was kind of the, the matchup guy. Even though we had Deion Jones, he was, like, very good matching up-wise, too. But he was used more on running backs. I was more on bigger receivers, tight ends. Um, just because, I guess, my, my my corner background back in the day. But uh, as a mic, you're kind of plugged there in the middle. So that it was different playing styles that I had to learn. And I still think that I could get, get even better at it in terms of uh, play recognition and being – well, now um, – without some of the limits that we had as the mic last year, this year being more di downhill when I recognize the run. Um, you know, I'm just definitely looking forward to keeping on improving, you know, playing that mic position. Yeah. And I imagine playing corner, like you said, it would, you know, help you identify those coverages. And I mean, you being the mic linebacker too, you're essentially the quarterback of the defense, right? Yeah, that was definitely a big um, change too, you know, calling the defense because I like to run to the football and be all over the place. So coming back and having that extra wind, extra breath to communicate everything to everybody before the plays was definitely an adjustment too. Okay, so um, I've asked this question to a couple of uh, linebackers I've had on the show um, and defensive players, you know, being in the NFL, who was the most difficult running back to 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 take down or to face uh in your experience they're all they're i mean once you get week to week they're all good man so i'll, I'll like my bias answer is zeke zeke your elliot especially when he's healthy he's uh elusive but he's big he can run with his shoulders down where he keeps his balance somehow um and just when you think he's gonna run you over he can make you miss so 
Uh, I think he's, you know, very tough to to bring down. Obviously, there's some guys like Josh Jacobs that just runs hard all the time, no matter what. Uh, he's a load, but he's also very fast, very quick. Um, Mike Davis, I remember, and he with Christian McCaffrey. That's Christian McCaffrey's another one. Mike Davis, when he got a shot with Carolina, when Christian McCaffrey hurt, he had a, a good couple games on us where I feel like he's a hard runner too. So I think that a lot of running backs just need their chance. Um, but most most guys, you know, they're tough, tough to bring down if you're not bringing it every day. Derrick Henry, I, yeah, obviously I, I was a, my second year when we played him, so I didn't get that many reps against him. And then Taylor, I just see him on film, but I'm excited to go against both these guys. I know Houston probably got, you know, their running style, at least from last year, they used to pound it, you know, ground and pound that ball, the rock. So um, I think it's a perfect conference for me to go out there and show out every game. Yeah, yeah. It'll be exciting to watch, man. Uh, I, I just want to close out with, you know, one one last question here. Um, you know, I was just kind of curious if you had any advice um, for, you know, young aspiring athletes that are, are wanting to make uh, their journey to the NFL. My advice, I always want to say be coachable. Um, aspiring athletes is always a grind uh, kind of coming up. And sometimes you're the best out there and sometimes you're not the best out there. But regardless, uh, there's a lot more time to get better. And the only way you can get better is listening to people who are trying to help you, whether that's somebody who's done it before, somebody that you trust, they kind of are telling you what you need to get better at. So sometimes you got to, uh, you know, let that ego go to the side and really, you know, lock in and, and put those hours in and, and listen to those people trying to reach out and help you because there's always somewhere else that you can go with your game. Um, and two, I just say have fun and be confident. Um, I say get into multiple sports if you can. I know a lot of people specialize nowadays, but I think the skills that you learn from growing up playing multiple sports, um, you know, makes the transition easier and it kind of gives you a break so you don't get burnt out too quickly of one sport. Um, but then kind of, if you're successful at multiple sports, like no matter what you get into, I feel like you can be confident in your skills and ability because you've learned how to adapt in different situations where, you know, you learn how to be successful. Um, and no matter what comes out in front of you, you know, you've been, you know, while playing this sport with this team, done that, while playing this sport, with another team done that, uh, gives you the amount of the right amount of confidence to, to, uh, continue to want to move forward. Well, I think that's great advice for you. Thanks so much for taking time to come on the show. You've been so gracious with your time and it's been a blast talking to you. Um, best of luck to you, man. Looking forward to uh, watching you wreak havoc and hopefully uh, return to Saxonville. <laughs> there you go. That's the goal right there. appreciate you having me on. Definitely a good time. Duval! What's up, everybody? It's Andrew from the Jaguar Podcast. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, there's more content over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as always. And remember, this is a podcast, so you can find this pretty much wherever you find podcasts. There I'll be doing interviews of current and former Jaguars players, including Joe Schobert, uh, Dewan Smooth, Shaq Quarterman, etc. And I also do interviews of former Jaguars players, including Natron Means, Jimmy Smith, Tom McManus, etc. So be sure to check out the podcast, subscribe to it, stay safe, stay sane, stay healthy, go Jags, and I'll see you next time.